In this video, I will finally get to acquiring uranium metal for my element collection. There are many different ways of making uranium, some of which can pretty much only be done industrially, but I will take more of a chemist's approach. Today I will be working with depleted uranium, meaning that somewhere it was once used in a uranium enrichment plant, removing most of its uranium-235 content. Depleted uranium metal can be used as a counterweight in planes, shielding in tanks, or in bullets that effectively penetrate armored vehicles or ironically as radiation shielding, as well as some other smaller applications. You might wonder why they won't just use another dense metal, like tungsten, for these applications. But uranium is malleable and cast easily with its relatively low melting point, opposed to tungsten, which is brittle and has the highest melting point of all metals. And perhaps surprisingly, depleted uranium isn't so expensive, because the applications aren't really high value. Enriched uranium, generally in its dioxide form, is almost exclusively used for the production of energy in nuclear reactors, while enriched uranium metal is used in nuclear weapons. Enrichment of uranium is also quite a difficult process that can only be done with highly technical equipment, so that isn't something for the backyard people. Anyhow, I will be starting from the uranium compound uranyl nitrate, which I will convert into uranium tetrachloride and then uranium tetrafluoride. I will then use the tetrafluoride to make uranium metal. So in this flask, I have some uranyl nitrate with questionable purity. Uranyl nitrate can be made very easily from naturally occurring uraninite, as I have shown in an earlier video. But what I have here, I bought directly. I originally had it in solution that I evaporated down in this flask, but it might contain some unknown components because I am a little skeptical about the source. And it might be partially contaminated with thorium oxide as well. Either way, these contaminants shouldn't be relevant for the process, but it will definitely affect the perceived yield. So we will ignore the yields for this one. Again, the uranium in here is depleted, so the radiation that comes off is a lot lower than natural uranium. If we use a gamma detector, like this Radia Code 103, we can see the gamma radiation coming off it is very low compared to the background radiation. Radia Code is also the sponsor of this video, so I of course would only put it in a video that involves radiation. So you can thank Radia Code that this video is here now. Because it's also a spectrometer, we can also identify which radioactive isotopes are in our sample, as they emit gamma radiation at energies that are specific to them. If we allow the Radia Code to measure the radiation for a minute and collect some data, we can see the spectrum in the app and identify isotopes that form from the radioactive decay of uranium. So with gamma spectroscopy, we can confirm that we have uranium in this sample. Outside the lab, we could use it to identify radioactive rocks, naturally or unnaturally radioactive locations, nuclear fallout, or contamination. If we compare it to this other detector, that can catch some beta radiation as well as gamma, but isn't so sensitive to gamma, it barely picks up on anything. Beta radiation will mostly be blocked by the glass and plastic of the detector itself. So this Geiger counter isn't so reliable to detect only gamma radiation. Either way, I will first have to convert the uranyl nitrate into uranium tetrachloride. To do so is very simple, and I only have to add the reagent hexachloropropene that I made myself and showed in a previous video. I just add a random excess that is enough to cover most of the solid. I then attach a condenser and crank up the mantle to full heat, which is 300 degrees Celsius. As it heats, the reaction gradually starts and first dark red nitrogen dioxide starts coming off the mixture. The hexachloropropene starts to boil and the reaction continues relatively calmly, even though it looks like a miniature of hell. I just leave it heating like this overnight. In this reaction, uranyl nitrate reacts with four equivalents of hexachloropropene, converting it into uranium tetrachloride. Originally, this reaction was thought to produce dinitrogen tetroxide, chlorine, and this acid chloride. But new studies have found that the real product is this dichlorohexachlorofulvine, which can be recovered. How this reaction proceeds exactly is not fully detailed yet, but if we consider the formation of this product, we need to add oxygen as a product to balance it. When I return the next day, we see some green uranium tetrachloride has appeared, and the mixture is refluxing normally. Ideally, some effort should be made to shake the flask and get everything to come loose, since some unreacted material can stick to the size of the glass, while being covered in uranium tetrachloride. Stronger stirring can also be helpful. This time, it looks like it contains a tiny amount of unreacted uranyl nitrate, since there are some small yellow spots, but it should be very little. Anyhow, I took it off heat and cooled it down directly by adding the solvent dichloromethane, which I will use to wash the uranium tetrachloride. After allowing all of the material to settle to the bottom, I carefully decant off most of the dirty liquid. From this, 
unreacted hexachloropropene can be recovered by distillation if desired. I then wash the uranium tetrachloride with more dichloromethane and decant that as well. And I repeat that a few more times. The material doesn't dissolve into the liquid, so it can just be discarded normally into the appropriate waste bin. I put the flask with the uranium tetrachloride into the heating mantle and use a short path distillation apparatus to vacuum distill all the remaining dichloromethane to get a dry uranium tetrachloride powder. I am then left with what should be mostly uranium tetrachloride and we see the gamma radiation is the same as before. If we compare it to a sample of uranium tetrachloride that I made from uraninite and so is natural and not depleted, we see that this small amount already emits 20 times more gamma radiation and the color is also different from impurities and it's also a bit older so it has reacted with some water. After letting the flask sit closed for two days, the color seemed to change dramatically. Uranium tetrachloride reacts with moisture from the air, but it should be very limited in a closed flask, so it probably looks more dramatic than it really is. When I remove the stopper, some hydrogen chloride gas quickly pops out, so for sure a tiny bit has reacted. Anyhow, I just dissolve all of the uranium tetrachloride into the solvent tetrahydrofuran, in which impurities should be insoluble. I shake it and then let it stir for a while. I also added some more solvent. After letting it settle, all the impurities sink to the bottom and all the uranium tetrachloride should be dissolved, giving a very dark green solution. To remove the settled impurities, I decant it carefully into this flask while filtering it through some cotton. I wash the flask with some more solvent and the settled white solid definitely doesn't dissolve. It seems those tiny particles pass through the cotton, so I just continue with what I already have since it settles so slowly. Now that I have a solution containing uranium tetrachloride, I can convert it easily to uranium tetrafluoride. For that, I only need hydrofluoric acid. So to the solution, I add a random excess of 48% hydrofluoric acid. A solid precipitates and I immediately add water to dilute it. All of the uranium tetrachloride immediately converts to uranium tetrafluoride, so I can destroy all the excess acid by adding the base potassium carbonate until it stops bubbling from the addition. When that was done, I tried to filter out the solid, but the particle size was very small and it passed through the filter. Instead, like before, I just left it all to settle and decanted off the majority of the liquid. I then washed it with water a few more times and repeat the process. After that, I distill off all the residual water and dry it out, giving uranium tetrafluoride as a greenish blue solid. I move all of it to this dish and the yield turned out to be 13 grams. So now that that's finished, I can use this to make uranium metal. If we measure the gamma radiation again, we can see it now detects 5 to 10 times more gamma radiation after it has been concentrated, purified and measured directly instead of through glass. Now I will follow a procedure that was previously shown by the channel Cody's lab on YouTube. He said that uranium tetrafluoride exists as a hydrate and it's best to drive off the water under vacuum and heat together with some calcium chloride. I'm not completely sure if it is required since I couldn't find much about the hydrates and it likely dehydrates inside the furnace anyway and heating it a lot seemingly causes it to become dark and I'm not so sure if that's a good sign in this case. Though in his video it also became dark and he still got some results but I'm not too confident if it is helpful. These kinds of color changes don't instill confidence. Either way, I will do this treatment to some of my uranium tetrafluoride and for the rest, I won't do it. But I will still add calcium chloride to all of them. When the heat and vacuum treatment is finished, I wait for it to cool down and then add an excess of lithium pieces into the tube. I then seal the tube in air since I am not skilled enough to seal something under vacuum. My other tubes, I seal with calcium chloride and lithium without any heat or vacuum treatment. The water will probably react with excess lithium which will melt quickly in the furnace. It should also react quickly with all of the oxygen, so I think the lithium will protect it. I'm not completely sure at which temperature this reaction takes place. Probably at quite low temperatures already, but the high temperatures are necessary to melt the uranium and collect it into a bead, otherwise it will just be a complete mess. I then use a crucible like this, or any other, and put in one or two tubes together. The glass will soften and collapse a bit under the heat, but it will not melt, and so it will contain all the materials. 
without exposure to the air from outside. Here's footage from one of my test runs in a different crucible, where I covered the tube with sand. Since the radiative heat from this is so fucking hot and annoying, and I am balancing my camera on a waste container, I didn't want to film each time. I think you get the idea. You put the crucible with the stuff in the furnace, the furnace gets very hot, you wait, and then you take it out. After allowing the material in the crucible to cool down in some sand, I can pour it out and it seems the glass has split into two pieces. This one seems to be mostly glass, and not much is in there, so I just set it aside. The other piece definitely has some stuff inside, and also gives some gamma readings, but I have to crack it open, which I perform elegantly with the handle of some pliers. Expectedly, most of the radiation is contained in the black part, as uranium easily tarnishes and forms a black oxide layer. Some of the pieces are just crumbly black, but others feel more solid. To eat away the oxide layer, and dissolve any salts that might be sticking to it, I put it in some dilute nitric acid. It bubbles lightly from the reaction, and I just let it sit for a while. When that's done, I poured off the excess nitric acid, and put the solid pieces on a paper towel. There's a bunch of oxidized, uncoalesced junk, but there's also a very tiny piece of what looks like a solid grayish metal. If I take that piece alone, and measure the radiation, it is definitely radioactive. But since it's such a small amount, it isn't super much. After a while, it also tarnishes slowly and gives off some black oxides. So it's probably a tiny amount of uranium. So I guess that was it. I now have a little piece of uranium. Now should I get more uranium and make a tiny play button? That is the question. Let me know down below. Also, if you want to pick up the Radio Code 103, you can follow the link in the description.